Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Dojo Live Recap Show. I am Tulio Siragusa, and today we are recapping last week's show where we talked about managing stress at work. I want to welcome my co-host, Carlos Ponce, who is uh, dialed in from Mexico City. Hi, Carlos. Good, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Tulio. It's good to have you here, too. Yeah, it's good to be here. So it was an, an interesting topic last week with uh, Kavan Chandra talking about managing stress at work. And one of the things uh, he talked about was this idea of go and shake your coworkers' hands instead of shaking the mouse all day. Of course, right now, we're not being encouraged to shake hands <laughs> as a way to uh, <laughs> keep this, this, this coronavirus thing under control. But um, there were some key points that came out of that conversation that I thought were worthwhile recapping. Uh, if I remember correctly, the one key thing was find a ritual to take a break. Like his ritual, it was a Rubik's Cube. You know, he, he, gets this, he gets this Rubik's Cube, he goes around with it, he plays with it and gets people's attention and starts a conversation. And two was get into conversation with people face to face, right? So if you're at the cubicle all day and you're just heads down, one, have a ritual to go take a break and two, find, use it as a way to spark up conversation. And lastly, um, be patient with yourself. I thought that was a really good uh, point. Now, I like a great deal this idea of finding a ritual. Um, you know, he's got this Rube's Cube that he's used, but a ritual could be like you go make a tea. You know, I have a friend who makes matcha tea, which is a, it's like a whole ritual to make this Japanese tea. And that ritual takes him away from the moment, right? Whether it's... Uh, you know, planning a meeting or in the middle of, uh, you know, working through the day. It's just something personal that he gets to do and it allows him to become more present and uh, take a mental break, if you will. And I really like that. I started thinking about that myself, like what kind of rituals can I implement to take breaks throughout the day? And, and I've, I've done things like take a walk. I've gone to take a walk. Uh, sometimes even if I'm on a phone call, I'll do it while I'm walking. Uh, so what's worked for you, Carlos? What are some of the things that you've done in terms of managing stress at work? <clears throat> well, definitely, uh, even though that, uh, well, you and I both know that the, the environment at Nearsop is really not that stressful as, as, as uh, the one in other, like in other companies. But when uh, I get some kind of stress, I definitely uh, um, pause or break for breathing exercises. Okay. So it's uh, that, that, really has worked me uh, many times in the past. And I have even applied it in during maybe not only at work, but maybe during the, the transportation period that it takes me to get from my house to the office, for example, which is a long one, I break. You know, I break for breathing exercises. Sometimes people might even stare at me like, what, does, what's, what the hell is this guy doing, right? But it's all about re remembering that, that uh, whatever works for you you, you got to do it regardless of what people think. So as you say, rituals are work. They work. They are reminders that we need to break. And then also they ground us. Uh, and breathing for me uh, definitely gro uh, grounds me. And also you, you mentioned the, ma the matcha tea part. And I, I have my own rituals with my coffee making machine. Uh, so those little things actually do work for me. Occasionally I might even have grab a pencil. Or a pencil and uh, have might uh, doodle something uh, because I like to draw, as you probably know. So those would be my three things that I do regularly, just to keep me uh, relaxed and focused, or, or and even grounded. You know, they help me to to not um, how can I say this? Uh, will to navigate mindlessly. Uh, through a number of things that are really not relevant. So that's that's what helps me, Tulio. Yeah, I, I really like not only the idea of a ritual, but the idea of a ritual that engages other people. I think one of the things that stood out was this idea of... The conversation that, Yeah, have a conversation. In other words, be in relationship with other people on, right. on a basis of other than work, right? So... Mm -hmm. You know, the, it used to be the cooler, people would be like the cooler talk, but that was kind of a nice way to take a break and have a conversation. But we live more in a time where people are very into their work and we use technology to communicate. And quite often, in some respect, we've lost the art of the relationship in the office, right? The, the ability to just 
have 10 minutes to do nothing but banter about, you know, nothing that's really that important, just to take a mental break. I love the idea of finding something that gets other people curious. Like in your idea, you'd like to doodle and you're a really good artist with that. I was thinking, what if you just went into the office and you started whiteboarding something and asked people to participate, to add to it? That could be a pretty cool way to create a ritual to get people talking and engaging. Uh, and I think that's the thing. I'd love to hear from any of the audience members what works for them, any rituals they've developed in the office to take a break, to engage other people, to just have like a five minute snooze, if you will, from the mm -hmm. day. Um, those who, who have it, please post it in the comments, whether you're watching us on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter or uh, YouTube, just please post your comments. We'd love to hear it and it'd be a great thing to share with other people that are watching as well. Anything else stay now for you? Uh, Carlos, during our interview with uh, Coven? Well, yeah, actually, well, something that stood out was the fact that uh, even though that uh, our guest, I think he was um, part of a very demanding, not only company, but also culture because he was in Germany. So I could assume that entire, his entire environment is quite demanding. However, he seemed to me I don't know if you perceived it the same, but uh, he was, he seemed to be very, 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 very relaxed and very even happy about, you know, the whole thing. So yeah, he's got it. He's got it dialed in. And we, like yeah. just from the smile, you could tell he was like, no problem. I've got, you know, I've got my ritual. I've figured out a way to take enough breaks. Right. And, and, the, and I guess that goes back to this idea. Also be patient with yourself. I was listening like, what do you mean be patient with yourself? Um, Sometimes we put high demands on our on our mm. own selves, right? And right. um, and so I really appreciated that that input about being patient. Um, yeah, absolutely. What, what, anything else that stood out for you? Uh, I guess that would be not not really other other than the fact that I got I was encouraged uh, because it kind of gave me hope, you know, that regardless of how stressing an environment can be. You can always do something to just to keep you in a good level, and also to remind you that you should you should take your work seriously. Yes, but not that seriously, you know, because you got to remain calm. You got to remain uh, approachable. You got to remain healthy. Uh, so it's it's all about a matter of balancing things out in a way that work for you, and then that you do your work, but you got to remain healthy. You know, uh, up here and up here. So I think that uh, this, our guest achieved that very successfully. That was my impression. So yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. take so, the advice. So for those listening, uh, the biggest advice, the biggest input from the show is find a ritual that works for you. Whatever that is, get a little ball. You're gonna kick around and have some people join you. Do that, and you know, in the office or Rubik's cube or anything else that's just a fun little thing. You know, get a puppet, have them talk to each other. Whatever it is, to uh, to take a mental break and engage with your co colleagues in conversation, in relationship with things other than just work. And you know, like five minutes will do wonders in resetting the clock and and getting yourself back on track. So thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to continue to do these recaps. We'd love for you to join us. If you watch the show on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Pacific and you want to participate and you, you picked up on something and you want to share with the audience, we'd love to have you be one of the squares right here in the video. It's very simple. We just, you just need your computer and we'll send you a link to join us. And you can be part of the Dojo Live recap show just, uh, just like us. Thanks for yeah. joining us. And what's coming up Wednesday for, for this Wednesday? Wednesday, we are going to be having a conversation with uh, Alex Bonardzik. I hope I pronounce it right. Bonardzik. Alex Bonardzik, he is the director of business automation, a digital expert. He's located in Vancouver. And we're going to be speaking about, I think the topic should be a great one because it's about embracing failure as an agent of change. Mm. Okay. So, uh, in other words, what Alex mentioned is that we're going to be speaking about uh, a journey from conservative or risk averse status quo centered centric corporate culture to dynamic process oriented culture that values 
early and frequent failure. So, so I, I, I'm eager to see how that pans out. And that's going to be happening right here on Dojo Live, Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific. Stay tuned, folks. And with that, thanks, guys, for joining us. And we'll see you Wednesday. See you Wednesday, Tulio. Have a good one.